2 Corinthians chapter 11. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And while you're turning there, I'm going to put something on the screen for you. Um, has anybody ever seen anything like this before? You ever, has anybody ever seen this before? Yeah. This is probably one of the dumbest things that a non-Catholic church has ever done that I can think of. A non-Catholic church. In fact, this is a Pentecostal church. Uh, I think it's down in Florida. They built a Jesus, a statue of Jesus coming up out of the water. Okay? Now, here's what I'm going to say to you. That is not Jesus. That's not Jesus. And for this church, and the reason why I know about this is about five or six years ago this thing got struck by lightning and burnt and I'm going God's got a sense of humor he sure does God sent a thunderbolt down from heaven and destroyed this thing they ought to know better you're not supposed to make a graven image the likeness of anything which is in heaven above or the earth or beneath the earth, you should not bow down to them, you should not pray to them. Uh, what I think of is Revelation 13. I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. That's what I think of when I see this thing. So anyway, that, here's, we're, we're dealing with this issue of another Jesus. That is it. That is another Jesus. Okay? If I'm... If I die and go off the scene, and you guys that are still left, uh, if whoever takes over this place, if they try to put something up like this, shoot him dead. <laughs> On the spot. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little my folly, and indeed bear with me. By the time I'm done with this series of lessons, you'll have these verses memorized, hopefully. For I am je and that's not a bad thing. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I've espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. It is really the responsibility of any pastor to present the body of his church to the Lord as a chaste virgin to Christ. A clean and a holy vessel uh, to, to join with Christ one of these days. That's the responsibility of good pastors out there. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, and that's what we're looking at right now, another Jesus, or if you receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. We had looked earlier at Genesis chapter 3, and if you want to turn there, you can. Uh, we were talking last week about uh, something that I feel is very significant, and I think that it's relevant, and I think it's real, and I don't think it's a... Uh, misinterpretation of scriptures to say this in fact I think it is an accurate interpretation of scriptures in Genesis 3 verse uh, 14 this is the curse that God has laid upon the serpent for what he did in the garden of Eden for his role that he played and the Lord God said unto the serpent because thou hast done this thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 15, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So two seeds that we see here in, in this text. The first one, he mentions the seed of the woman. 
We know by way of scripture that that is a reference to Christ. Christ was born of a woman. He is the seed of a woman. He uh, descends through Mary all the way back to Eve and Adam. So he is, the son, he is both son of God and son of man at the same time. So he's real. He's real. The seed of the woman being the savior, being the one who's going to bruise Satan, he's real. Now let's look at the seed of the serpent. Literally, the offspring of the serpent. His child. His replacement savior, in other words. Another Jesus. That's what we're going to look at today. There's a phrase that you'll find all through the scriptures, and I mentioned this last week, called Belial, or the son's or a son of Belial, or children of Belial, or daughters of Belial. Belial, according to 2 Corinthians 6, is Satan. What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? If you remember, there was a day when Belial, Satan, Lucifer, the devil, tried to get Jesus into a concord with him. That's not a car. Okay, that's an agreement. Satan tried to get Christ into a contract or a covenant or an agreement with him. He said, see all these kingdoms. If you will bow unto me, I will give you all of these kingdoms. That was part of the agreement that the devil tried with Jesus. He tried to get him to jump off a cliff. He tried to get him to bow to him. Uh, he tried to get him to turn stones to bread. And all three times Jesus refused to do so by answering him with scripture. And we know that Jesus said in both Psalms and Hebrews, uh, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Jesus was not allowed to go outside of the boundaries of scripture and come up with his own plan for salvation. He was going to follow the scriptures. So he's standing there with Lucifer, the devil, the serpent, Belial, and he's telling him, I cannot do what you asked me to do. It's a violation of scripture, and, I, and here's the scripture that it would violate, and I'm not going to do it. The Bible says he was in all ways tempted as we are. He was tempted with the lust of the flesh, he was tempted with the lust of the eyes, and he was tempted with the pride of life, yet without sin, the Bible says. Amen? And I just, I love the contrast of this. You have Satan tempting Eve in the garden. She fails. That's the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you have Satan tempting Christ, the second Adam. And Christ succeeds always where man fails. You might want to write that down somewhere. That'd be a good bumper sticker. Christ always succeeds where man fails. Amen. That's why we're here. That's why we believe in the cross. And we... Uh, reverence the cross and it's by the cross that you and I are even able to come to the house of God not by works of righteousness uh, on our own but by the righteousness of Jesus Christ he succeeds where we always fail and think about that apply that think about that in prayer the Bible even tells us that we can't even pray right but we know not what to pray so the Holy Ghost comes in and succeeds in prayer where we fail in prayer. The Holy Ghost helps our infirmities speaking things that cannot be uttered. Amen. They asked me in uh, Kenya, one of the pastors said, Pastor Hoggard, what is the secret to your success? And I said, failure. <laughs> I learned through my failures that it's not me that does it. It's Christ. And if Christ does it, then I'm going to rest in what Christ does. Because I'd rather have God do it in me. I'd rather have God do it in my family and my marriage. I'd rather have God do it in this church than me do it. I'll make a mess of it. God won't. Amen? So what concord hath Christ with Belial? Let's look at this phrase in the scriptures. If you want to turn to these places, because I'm going to dwell just for a little bit on each one. Uh, Deuteronomy 13, 13. Anytime this phrase is mentioned in the Bible, you get 
sort of a, uh, an understanding of the character. And here's where I'm going with this. I believe that in the last days, the earth is going to be inhabited by people who are the children of Belial. I believe the Antichrist is literally the son of Belial. In uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, we find in verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan. We know that Jesus was by way of the Holy Ghost. The Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is by after the working, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So, this phrase, sons of Belial, children of Belial, daughter of Belial, son of Belial, and so on. We're going to understand a little bit of the nature and the character of the seed of the serpent, the other Jesus. What is he going to do? So in Deuteronomy 13, 13, it says, Certain men, the children of Belial, are gone out from among you, and have withdrawn the inhabitants of their city, saying, Let us go and serve other gods which ye have not known. So what do, what is the son of the Belial, or son of Belial, going to do? Whereas when the son of God came, and the son of God comes into your life, he teaches you and draws you and compels you let us go and serve the one true God. The only true God. Amen? But then the children of Belial, the sons of Belial, the son of Belial, the Antichrist. He's going to go, let us go serve other gods. Plural. And we know those gods, little g gods, are the evil angels. The Bible uses that term. Uh, devils, little gods, little g gods, um, evil angels, devils, um, some call them fallen angels, that could be applied, you can see that in uh, places like uh, the book of Daniel in Revelation chapter 12 and so on, but let us go and serve other gods, in other words, let's bow down and worship devils. Let's follow devils. Let's follow after them, which ye have not known. Um, are there still witches around? Do you think they actually have the ability to do certain supernatural things or cause supernatural events? Do you think they have that power? Absolutely. Where did they get that power from? The force? Where did they get it from? Devils. Devils. Witches draw from what devils, what power devils give them. People who can read minds or people who are, who can predict the future. Number one, they're always going to be wrong at least one time. That lets you know that you don't have to worry about them. And number two, they, I believe devils have a very limited ability to see into the future. And I think they will give human prospects an advance. If, if they don't have the ability to see in the future, they certainly have the ability to say to somebody, tell everybody that a car's going to blow up at noon tomorrow in downtown Festus, and then they would go and blow the car up at noon, okay, and not be caught. So that they either have one ability or the other. But what's going to happen is, and what we see happening already, is that they're drawing people away with very powerful lying signs and wonders. Magic tricks that they do. Supernatural things that happen, and they draw these people away and say, let's go serve after other gods. Judges chapter 19. You may turn there. Judges chapter 19. The sons of Belial are mentioned here. Verse 22, now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, beset the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, 
the old man, saying, Bring forth the man that came into thy house, thine house, that we may know him. Sons of Belial and the spirit of the sons of Belial is a sodomite spirit. I'm going to tell you the story. Because I talked to Reg Kelly yesterday and he said I could tell it. I don't remember all the details, but I asked him specifically about it. Dave Bradley came here and told us, you need to talk to Reg and ask him about what happened at his house. Okay? So I called Reg, or he, he called me. He had a problem getting one of his uh, sermons uploaded through, on his iPad. So I'm his tech support guy. So he'll call me and say, uh, Mike, I've done it. I don't know how to get this thing. And you ought to see Reg with an iPad. It's amazing. <laughs> I was teaching him, I was showing him what to do, and I would push a button, and he'd say, now how did you know to push that button? Well, I don't know, I just know. All right. He said he was out in his barn cleaning, or a shop or something like that, cleaning, and he said a, a truck pulled up, and this guy got out, and he was, kind of, he was kind of about as tall as I am, and he had very bright, dyed red hair down to his bottom and he had a great big pistol on his side and he was carrying some sort of badge and he said that man he said i'm mike i'm telling you that man had women's breasts and he said he got out and he was very very caustic very with his as soon as he got out he starts asking Where's, and he gave the name of so-and-so. And And boy, Reg stood up like that and looked at him. And Reg said, the moment I saw him, there was just this presence of evil right there. Absolute, pure evil. Reg looked at him and he said, first of all, sir, you better tell me who you are and why you're here. And the guy said, Who I am is none of your business. Why I'm here is I want to know where so-and-so is. And Reg started walking to the guy. And here's this guy carrying a gun. And I asked Reg, Reg, were you carrying? He said, well, I had my gun, but it was in my pickup truck. Reg started walking. Let me tell you about Reg Kelly, okay? I am not Reg Kelly. Reg never is never afraid to get into it with somebody. Normally, I am. Okay? Now, that may be to his favor or it may be to his demise. Same with me. It may be to my favor and it may be to my demise. I don't know. But Reg just uh, was approaching the man talking to him. And Reg said, I'm telling you something. There's fixing to be trouble right here. You tell me who you are. You tell me why you're here. I'm fixing to call the sheriff. And the guy said, call the sheriff. He said, I work with the sheriff all the time. And Reg's just walking toward him, and he said that just, it was just this very, very wicked, evil presence. And finally, they, I mean, they just exchanged back and forth as Reg is walking. And the closer the Reg got, the faster he started walking. And this guy finally got back in his truck and took off down the road. And Reg said, I called the sheriff's department locally. He said, I know them guys. And I said, do you know a, such a person? He's about so tall. And uh, he's at, like in his mid-30s, something like that. He's got, he's got dyed red hair down to his bottom. And he's got woman's breast on him. And they said, no way. We don't know anybody like that. And he said, well, and he told them the story. And they said, we, Reg, I promise you, we don't have anybody that we ever work with that matches that description. Well, I think one of his boys called down to some deputies in the county south of them and uh, where the town of Ava, Missouri is. And here's something I didn't know. And this surprised me. You know where Reg lives? It's all rural. All farms is what it is. The county south of them is pretty similar to that. But in and around Ava, Missouri is one of the largest areas of sodomite activity in the whole state. They have like a retreat down there. It's called uh, Cactus Canyon. 
And then they all just piled into this one place. And he said, they're all over the place down there. And one of the deputies down in that area knew of the guy and said he's probably associated with that crowd down there. And Reg told me some other things about that area and some things they do down there that I will not mention, but it was, it was awful. There's a spirit there. Right here, Judges 19.22, does it make sense now, if you understand the spiritual realm, does it make sense what's going on in our country? Now, Something to remember, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And as Reg is walking toward this guy, he knows this. Reg is not going to be afraid of that. I might have went, Reg, don't go over there. He's got a gun. Reg is not afraid of that. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Something to keep in mind. And I'm not sure how it's all going to break down. not sure how it's all going to happen. But one of these days, there's going to be a battle. There's battles fighting every day, but one of these days, there's going to be a great, big, huge battle to fight. And we're going to have to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. And Pastor Kelly did not cower down to this man, did not cater to him, was not trying to be nice to him. He knew the evil spirit that was there. And he said, Mike, if he would have got out and said, uh, Sir... Um, I hate to trouble you if you could help me just for a minute. I, I've, got, I've got a situation. I need to find somebody. Red said, I would have been more willing, you know, to... But he said he just jumped out and immediately, okay, went on the attack, went on the offense. And I believe that's because the spirit that is in Reg and the spirit that is in this... The spirit that is in this guy uh, sensed, just like a dog senses in somebody that this person's not a nice person, that spirit sensed the spirit that was in Reg and went, uh-oh, we better act mean and look mean and carry a big pistol and all of this stuff. We better do that because the spirit of the Lord is in this place. We better do something about it. They're not afraid of Reg. Spirits are not afraid of Reg Kelly. They're afraid of who's in Reg Kelly. Likewise, spirits are not afraid of you, but they are afraid of the Spirit of God that is in you. The Spirit of Christ that is in you. Amen? Amen. Bring forth the man that came into the house that we may know him. The, the sodomite spirit, the Antichrist spirit, is a spirit of sodomy. It is a spirit of sodomy. And um, when you speak out against sodomy, and when you take a stand against sodomy, you watch, you're going to see that spirit. They're going to come out very, very mean. They, they preach tolerance, but it's tolerance of everybody except Bible believers. Mark it down. Judges chapter 20. Judges chapter 20. Now therefore, verse 13. Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah, that we may put them to death and put away evil from Israel. But the children of Benjamin would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. The children of Belial must be put to death. Did you, when, when you study the uh, false teachers and the false prophets of 2 Peter chapter, what is it, chapter 3, 2 Peter chapter 2, and Jude, you will see both of those say, these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. I'm telling you that some people are just given over to a reprobate mind. They are apostates. They are never going to be saved. They have a beast, brute beast mentality about them and a brute beast spirit in them. And they are made for nothing but to be taken and destroyed. Amen? That doesn't mean you have a right to go out and start shooting people. Okay? But it means that at some point, Jesus is going to come back, and what is he going to do with them? He's going to destroy them because they have a beast nature. They must be put away, and once that's done, once you get the children of Belial out, there'll be peace in, in, it, in Israel. You'll be putting away the evil from Israel, and there'll be peace there. 1 Samuel 2.12, the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. Watch this, and it, then it defines them further. 
They knew not the Lord. Now here's the, here's the interesting thing about this. Eli's sons were employed in what occupation? Does anybody know? They were religious figures. High-ranking religious figures. They were way up at the top. And because of that, and because of them being Eli's sons, and because by, that by birth they were given that office, they didn't have to work for it, they didn't have to earn it, they didn't care about it. Because of those three issues, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were very evil and very corrupt. So here they are, watch this now. Here they are practicing the religion of the Lord, but they have no knowledge of the Lord that they are serving. They're lost. Might I say that I believe that it is very possible for church people and pastors to be completely lost and do church services. They knew not the Lord. How is it that we know the Lord? How do, you, how do we know the Lord? Ryan, how do you know the Lord? Keep going. The Bible, yes, amen. How do you, how do you know God? By reading the Bhagavad Gita? Hindu text, Book of Mormon, Doctrines and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price. How do we know the Lord? We read the Bible. Amen. You know who you read about. Okay? You know who you read about. When you're reading the Bible, you're knowing the Lord. You know who He is. The sons of Belial, they don't read their Bible. And might I say, that we have church members and preachers and deacons who don't know the Bible and don't know the Lord. They don't want anything to do with it. In fact, the spirit that is in them won't let them read it. It will not let them read it. 1 Samuel 25. Turn there. Here's another, another issue with the sons of Belial. 1 Samuel 25. 1 Samuel 25 is... A prototype of the rapture, by the way. It's a marriage that takes place. And um, Abigail is the one who's married. She's married to Nabal. I like this story. I'm going to turn to, I'm going to, turn to Romans 7. 1 Samuel 25 and Romans 7. Because it's so beautiful how, how the Bible lays this out. Um, Abigail is married to Nabal. Nabal is a son of Belial. And when it says here in verse 17, Now therefore no one consider what thou wilt do, for evil is determined against our master and against all his household, for he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. What does that imply? What does that mean? He won't listen to anybody. He won't, amen. Reproofs of instruction are the way of life. He will not listen to wise counsel. He will not listen to iron sharpening iron. He will not listen to his friends. He will not listen to anybody counsel him. Christ Jesus is the wonderful and he's the counselor. And he cannot, the Holy Ghost cannot penetrate his concrete mind, his concrete heart. And he will not, he is a son of Belial and he will not ever change. That's who he is and that's how he's going to be. And I hear this from people, who, guys who think they're real tough. Well, I guess I'm going to hell when I die. <laughs> there's no laughing in hell. I read the Bible, and there's no laughing in hell. But anyway, that's guys that think they're tough. Guys that don't have to listen to anybody. Guys that don't love their wives. And he's married to this man. Now, Paul said in Romans 7, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak unto them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath an husband, 
Abigail has a husband. Her name is Nabal. He is churlish. He's evil. He's a son of Belial. He's not going to be converted. Your flesh is never going to be converted, people. Your flesh is never, ever going to be saved. Your flesh is not, is not savable. It is a son of Belial. It's wicked. It's evil. It's, it's idolatrous. It's covetous. We look at things and we want them. We look at people and we want them. We are full of covetousness, the Bible says. Our heart is desperately wicked, deceitful above all things who can know it. So that's Nabal. And Abigail is married to him. Our soul is stuck with this flesh until when? Till the flesh dies. Once we die, now we are... For, uh, so then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, so she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also, ye also, are become dead to the law. That's what Nabal represents. And if, watch this. Uh, you're in 1 Samuel 25. Let me show you the law. How many commandments were there? Oh, come on. That's an easy question. Ten. Thank you very much. Look at... Um, oh, let's see here. Verse 37 of 1 Samuel 25. Abigail comes to Nabal and she tells him what happens. But it came to pass in the morning when the wine was gone out of Nabal and his wife had told him these things that his heart died within him and he became as a what? What were the king commandments written on? Stone. And it came to pass about how many days? Ten days after that that the Lord smote Nabal that he died. Nabal is the law that we're married to. We're under the dominion of the law. And the law doesn't change for us. Amen? And he's, there's a curse under that law. Curse under that law. Reg uh, asked me, I was talking to him yesterday, he said, how is it you're dealing with all these Hebrew roots Yahshua people? And I said, Reg, I, I spent like a year, almost nonstop, just dealing with th that issue. I said, to me, they're voluntarily leaving Jerusalem above, and they're putting themselves under the covenant of Mount Sinai, which means they're under a curse. That while they pretend that they're keeping the law at a Passover feast, they're so full of lust and beguilement that they're deceivers. And I said, so if you keep the law, but you break the law while you keep the law, are you still keeping the law? No. If you say, well, we kept Passover feast, if you didn't keep it in Jerusalem, you broke the law. Okay, three times a year. Was that the bell? I didn't hear it, so it doesn't apply. But anyway, Nabal is a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Your flesh cannot be converted. Your flesh doesn't want to hear it. Does not want to hear it. Your soul, however, does. So when Nabal dies... What's Abigail free to do? That's what he was saying in Romans 7. What, now that the man has died, what can Abigail do? Marry David. Who's a type of, and she goes with five damsels. Five damsels. How many wise virgins are there? It's beautiful. Amen? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for uh, the beauty of your word, opening up our eyes, teach us great and mighty things that we know not. God, we don't know everything. I don't know everything. Father, I pray, God, that you would compel me. God, that you would draw me more and more into your word than I have been. God, that you would use me in a greater way. Father, Lord, I love this church. I love your people. I love this Bible. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would just fill us with goodness. Show us the difference, Father, between God's people and the world's people. And dear God, help us to please, God, help us be God's people, we pray in Jesus' name. And all the God's people said, Amen. Amen.